who doesn't love watching a potato reveal, right? Well, it's currently the middle of September and my main crop potatoes are now ready for harvest. But I've already harvested a few of my second early potatoes, the Charlottes. So in this video, we're going to split into two. I'll show you that previous footage that I shot earlier on in the year to see how those did. And then we'll come back and um, harvest my main crops that I've got in buckets over here. We'll tip them out and see how many we've got of those as well. So let's fly back into the past and we'll see how the Charlottes did first. So this is where all my potatoes are growing this year, right at the top of my allotment. So they get most of the sun all day and then from about five o'clock it starts to go to part shade. I've got about 12, 15 buckets in here. Some of these are my later um, varieties which I'll be harvesting more towards the autumn time. But right here we've got a Charlotte that's sort of blown over now and I'm sure it's about ready. I put this on the surface despite already having some mulch there because once the, um, the plant had flopped over in the wind um, it just helped prevent the sunshine from baking that top area, preventing any potatoes from turning green and also from um, the water from escaping too much from transpiration. So let's drag it out and see what's going on. So then this Charlotte potato, it's a new potato, but if you leave it in the ground a bit longer, it just means you get bigger potatoes. Um, I put one seed potato in each pot and this is about a 25 litre pot. I can already see that I've got ants in here, which isn't a good sign because it means that all of their tunnels that they make is probably drying out the plant. Um, but I'm hoping that by using the Dalefoot peat-free compost, which is made from rotted down sheep's wool and bracken, the wool actually helps hold on to moisture a lot better. So it means that your pots are less likely to dry out and hold on to that water. So um, I'm just gonna actually snip away this foliage and dodge all of these red ants. They're such a nuisance. Okay, let's see what we have. I do have a few more pots of this Charlotte, but we'll see what's in this one first. Oh, I'm gonna put my gloves on because these ants are everywhere. Right, gloves on, so I'm not gonna be bitten to death. Oh, look, that is a nice size spud. Well, the good news is the soil doesn't look too dry. Oh, hello. Look at all of these. These are fantastic. Oh, it looks like something started to eat at that one. And that one as well. So maybe that was rodent damage. But otherwise, not too bad. And all I do is put a bit of blood fish and bone into the pot however this time i did also put in some chicken manure as well well i think that's it for that one. Oh no it's another one there just a shame that those ones have been nibbled now because i don't want the rodents to go eating any more of the spuds i'm actually going to harvest the other bucket of shallot potatoes as well because I think it must be a favourite of theirs as well. Rascals. Well hopefully I don't have any ants nesting in this one but oh no they're in here again. It's such a pain. There's only way, one way of knowing what we've got. Let's tip it out and see. Now for saying it's got ants nesting in it and that we've had a severe heat wave, to be honest, um, I'm quite surprised at how moist the pot still is. So 
I have strong faith in the Dalefoot peat-free compost and I know a lot of people have had speculations about the quality of such composts um, and it's true that there are a lot of rubbish ones out there but I grow all my crops in peat-free compost and the Dalefoot one is a premium range I've not been sponsored by the way but I do think you get what you pay for and that is good quality compost that's made here in the UK so these are quite a big size aren't they they're saying that they're new potatoes I've probably left them in a little bit too long but this is fantastic really pleased oh they keep going as well I really didn't think I'd have this many and they're so healthy as well they're not showing any signs of scab which is a um, it's like a blemish you get on the skin which is a symptom of dry weather or infrequent watering and they look free from that well I am very pleased with those I don't have a set of scales here so I'll have to take them home to see what they weigh but yeah that is fantastic so now for the potatoes I'll take them home and just keep them somewhere cool and dark but it probably won't take me too long to get through them because they are one of my favourites and the compost well I can either mulch my beds with it um, but I might actually reuse it to grow things like my salads in pots I might put a bit more um, nutrients into it put some chicken manure and some blood fish and bone again just to help give it a little bit of a boost because there won't be much nutrients left in it but as long as we're not growing anything that's too demanding then it's absolutely fine to use again and because it's quite a premium product I want to get my money's worth out of it so there we are that's my potato harvest from two buckets of Charlotte new potato and I'm very pleased so um, do let me know how your potatoes have done this year particularly if you grow them in pots I do love to hear from you um, mine are all in pots because I have wireworm in the soil which damages them before I harvest them so this is my fantastic way of getting around that problem and I do have a full length video if you want to know how I grow them from start to finish <laughs> so yeah not a bad result for the charlottes um, we've just finished using them all up now and um, I need some more potatoes, hence why I'm going to be harvesting my main crops today. So let's go over and see how they're doing. Well, you'll have to excuse the mess because it's that time of the year now when I need a big tidy up. But the pots are still here um, and it's looking probably quite a lot different to the footage you've just seen because the cosmos have flopped over. But the buckets themselves, um, I put this over to stop the rats from getting at the potatoes because they've done that in the past um, which works so first I'm just going to take all of this back and you can see I've got a great big thistle there <laughs> but the plants themselves have completely died back not even a speck of foliage remaining so it's definitely time to get these out oh it turns out this one is actually a charlotte and I didn't realize I had another left in here so we're gonna have some quite big new potatoes <laughs> in here let's just move this out of the way let's see what charlottes we've got left it's gonna be really interesting because of the drought that we had in sort of july time and i've been really rather worried about these because they've been so difficult to stay damp but it looks like we've still got some good charlottes in here oh this is fantastic and look they've just started to regrow which is uh not what we want so just rub them off but you know you could always start to grow these for your christmas potatoes if you want to do that i don't tend to bother because to be honest i feel like you'd always get blight um, and then the frost soon comes but maybe you know what maybe i should try it in the tunnel one year so next up, this bucket is my Cara. And Cara's always been one of my fan favourites. As you know, it gets nice, big, massive potatoes that are great for baking, um, mashing, doing all sorts with. But I'm just a bit concerned that this year they might not be as big because of the drought that we've had. But I can already see some quite big ones, actually. 
Oh, and a great big worm. Well, would you look at that? <laughs> Got a little bit of scab, which is the um, speckled sort of skin that you get. But these are actually a really good size. Considering. Ooh. I am so, so pleased with that. It's been such a nightmare to keep these pots watered to the point where I was actually considering, you know, changing things next year because I don't know if I can keep up with it. So yeah, that's pretty good. The bucket number three, I think this is another Cara. Let me just take all this foliage off the top. And also not too many ants nests to be seen. But yeah, still pretty good size. Just separate them. So that's about the same there for bucket two as it is for bucket one, I'd imagine. Ah, now this is a variety I haven't grown for a long, long time. And it's called Maris Piper, which is a really popular one here in Britain for making roast potatoes and um, chips, I think, as well. But it's not one, as I say, I tend to stick to my favourites. And I don't know how well it would have done. Oh, Ooh. they're all hiding in the middle. Again, pretty scabby. Ooh, not the best looking potatoes. And I mean, they're not massive, but that's what I mean by the scab look. Yeah, Marius Piper, probably won't try growing that again. Not very um, healthy potatoes on this one. This looks like another Marius Piper, but actually they look a lot healthier. The compost is noticeably wetter. Um, still similar kind of size, but yeah, it's probably not one I'll grow again. Now this one says I put two Maris Piper in one bucket. However, this is a bigger bucket. I think this is about, a, uh, what does it say? It's probably more like a 30, 35 litre. You can see how much the compost has shrunk though. Oh, so already very small. Oh, hang on, got some bigger ones now. Definitely more of them. They're not a bad size. And again, I'm still actually quite impressed for saying how challenging this summer's been. Yeah, that's, that's actually pretty good. Sweet potato, oh, check that. Ooh, so this is pink for apple. And that is a main crop, slightly knobbly, small, long, elongated sort of shape. I haven't had a particularly great crop from it in the past, but it's meant to have one of the best flavors in terms of it being quite nutty and tons of flavour. So you can see, oh, I've got quite a, quite a good amount so far. These are, these are probably some of my best. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's not amazing, but it's, it's not bad for saying. Okay, this one's another pink fur. searching for your treasure. You know what? These are actually quite impressive. What's your favourite tasting potato? Charlotte's are definitely one of my favourites because they're just so reliable and oh my god look at that. Ugh, let's try not to bury them again. <laughs> Both pots combined, pink fair apple. So that's my harvest for this year. 
And I know a lot of you always ask me, how do I store these? And I have a little bit of a trick that I've been using for the last few years and it works really well for me, is that I actually reuse the buckets that I harvested them from, put them in variety by variety, and then top that and mix in a bit of this dry spent compost that I grew them in and I actually put them in my basement where it's quite cool and it's very dark. You could perhaps just stick them into a potato sack and do the same um, and you could also harvest them as you need to eat them but I obviously worry about things like the rats and obviously the frosts are going to come at some point so you can't keep them out for too long and also things like slugs um, you know, as soon as the weather starts to get wetter and cooler, um, the chances of them surviving for very long isn't are very slim, which is why you've got to harvest them. Um, but yes, I tend to store them in the dark, in my basement, in pots, and the Caras, in fact, even the Charlottes tend to keep for me as long as sort of February, March next year. I'm also sure on the pink fur apple. I haven't really grown them so successfully before, but. I really can't wait to try them. So uh, yeah, a few lessons learnt and a few surprises as well. So I probably won't be growing Maris Piper again. They don't seem very pest or disease resistant. Um, obviously the Charlotte is my absolute staple. It's one of my favourites. And the Cara, you know, I, I just stick to what I know because they do well <laughs> and it works for me. And I mean, you know, it's not the best year ever, but I'm really pleased with the results. I mean, is it cost effective? No, not at all. Delphic compost is very expensive and just growing your own potatoes is expensive because you can buy them so cheap in the supermarkets. But that's not why I do this. You know, I always get comments, oh, why don't you just pick them up from the shop for a pound like everybody else? Um, that's not what I'm here for. <laughs> that's not what I do. Um, it's fun and they taste great and you get so much access to better varieties when you grow your own. But no, the pots do take a lot of water and it's something I'll be thinking about next year. If this hot weather is going to become a trend, you know, and stick around like that, then it's not a, a really um, great way to grow potatoes. So I'll be thinking about that next year, but I'm really, really chuffed with how much I've got here. So uh, yeah, quite pleasantly surprised despite the drought we've had. Do let me know how your potatoes have done. Um, and I'm going to go uh, take these home now. So thanks for joining me and uh, enjoy your potatoes. <laughs>